Hey everyone, Susan Campfield here. How are you doing? Um, I hope you're joining me tonight. You're either joining me live here on Facebook for our Tuesday tutorial, or you're joining me on YouTube on my Sue Stampfield YouTube channel when I upload this video. So tonight we're going to be um, playing with a brand new uh, collection of products that is now available. I've given you a couple sneak peeks <laughs> with this one um, in previous weeks. So tonight we're going to make a, a gorgeous card with it and uh, it's got a nice springy fun feeling it was a beautiful day here in Minnesota it was I think 40 it was in the 40s which was wonderful so I'm so glad you can tune in tonight I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera and we'll get started you're gonna see my ceiling for just a moment while I get my uh, camera in my stand so that you can see my work surface here let's get this clipped in Hello, hello, hello. Sorry, I had my hand in front of the camera there. So um, we are going to be using the Butterfly Bouquet. Butterfly Bouquet became available for customers to purchase today. Um, and it is available. Um, some of the things in this suite uh, will be going in the new catalog. Some of the things in this, I should say collection, not suite, in this collection are only available until May 3rd. So let's take a look. Um, the items that are going to go in the catalog is the bundle, which is the stamp set and dies, which I'll show you in just a moment. And then the papers are going to be uh, exclusive. So those are only available until the end, uh, till May 3rd, which is the day before the new catalog comes out. So let's take a look here. Um, what I have is, let's start with the stamp set and the dies. So the stamp set is really one a very large stamp. Um, I have heard um, it's fairly inexpensive. It's I think 17 by itself. I've heard of some demonstrators buying the bundle and then buying a second set and cutting the, the butterflies apart and just using them individually. It's really personal choice. Um, I have left mine um, as a whole unit uh, because then it will match up with the die and be able to be easily cut out. So again, it's it's all, we're all about options, right? Now, if you did purchase this, you can see all these dies. Oh my gosh, look at all these dies, you guys. It's awesome. They're just, they're fabulous. Um, it takes two magnet sheets to hold them all. <laughs> um, so, and I'll tell you what they do here in a minute. Um, I did want to point out, if you purchase this bundle, you um, are going to want a very big, a very big block. This is our block F, the Stampin' Up! block F, and it is perfect for this um, stamp. So... Um, let's take a look at all of the dies. So this one um, cuts out the butterfly stamps. It also um, coordinates with the paper, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but you can also cut out, um, I guess I'll call them blank butterflies. Here, my arms are in the way here, but I just want to grab these in. So you can just cut out, uh, for instance, these are Seaside Spray. You can just cut out all these butterflies. So it doesn't stay um, linked together when you cut it. It does cut them as individuals. And then you can use these dies as standalone dies, or they're also made to layer over the... I call them blanks, <laughs> the blank butterflies. Now you can cut these butterflies out of plain paper like I've done here, or you can cut them out of pattern paper. Um, this I cut this one from a pattern in this paper, and then just, uh, it was the same pattern here, and then just put this overlay on top of it. So lots of options, um, lots of fun options with that one, and um, they all, they all match up. Um, I won't pull them all in here, but you can you get the you get the drift, right? So let's move on to the project that we're gonna make. We're gonna use this paper, and I'm just realizing that I didn't pull out the other paper. So let me grab that so I can show you right here. This one is the natural. It's gonna crinkle really loud. Sorry, the natural touch paper. I'll hold it over here so it's not killing you guys's ears. Sorry about that. Um, the natural touch paper is, um, it's a fairly thin 
uh, paper. I guess I would call it a designer paper, although it has uh, does have a finish to it. You can kind of see the shine there. Um, and it also has almost a texture to it. Um, I think it's just, I mean, I don't, eh, I guess I do feel a little bit with my fingers. It's almost like the wood grain there. It's very realistic looking. Um, and then the other side is um, more of kind of a stipple pattern. So um, with that, that's 12 by 12, and you get two of those in the pack, and it very much looks like a wood veneer almost. And um, so this is the Butterfly Bijou Paper. It is 6 by 6. It's a little different than some of our other 6 by 6 papers in that you get a lot um, of each pattern, which I really appreciate. Um, so you actually get eight sheets of each pattern, so we'll take a look at each pattern here. So this one is fun of a fun tie-dye effect with some rainbow butterflies. And the other side is a Burbuna Bay uh, subtle pattern. And then this one is a lot of small butterflies. And the other side is this fun pattern. And this one, which we're gonna use tonight, is sort of like clouds with monarch butterflies. And the back side is a calypso coral with a speckle. We're gonna use that tonight. Um, just for a layering piece. And then there's this one that has the rainbow butterflies, super cute. And then on this side, another kind of tie-dyed look in yellows and coral, which is very pretty. And then the, uh, oops, not the last one. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> Almost, second to last one um, is this one, which I've used just a ton of. It's Just Jade, Calypso Coral, uh, oh, excuse me, Just Jade, uh, Bermuda Bay, and Coastal Cabana are colors that look great with it. Also Mint Macaron. And then the other side is these small butterflies. And the last one, which is awesome, is this one right here. I didn't want to show you the other side because you're all going to want to use this side, but I'll show you the other side because it's pretty too. The other side is again kind of a very pretty kind of starry, um, I don't know, it's sort of tie-dyed, I guess. Um, reminds me of unicorns. I don't know why. It's just like, or cotton candy or something. I don't know. It's kind of fluffy. <laughs> but on this side, um, you have the advantage that the dye cuts out all of these butterflies. So that's what we're gonna use on our card tonight. I'm just gonna point out really briefly um, that there are two small solid butterfly stamps that are, are dies that are really cute. And then there is, oh, I'm missing one. Oh shoot, it's over on the other side of the room. Um, I'll show you what it does. <laughs> uh, grab it here. So there's this brick pattern and there's a, um, these are peek through dies and let me show you what they cut here. So this, this brick one is a peek through die. And so what I mean by peek through is that if you put something behind it, that peeks through and you can see it. So that's the brick one. The other one that's a peek through is a sort of speckle stamp, a uh, speckle die. So it just cuts little holes in your paper. So that would be really cute if you were um, die cutting. Let's see, where did I put it right here? Um, let's see if you were die cutting a, a butterfly here and you wanted it to have a speckle pattern on its wings. Um, you could use it that way. Um, you could also use it as little um, trails coming behind the, the butterfly. And then the other one, which I don't have on here, it's over at my uh, regular die cutting desk, is this die, which is sort of a texture die, except for it doesn't um, emboss the paper. It does actually cut the paper, and it cuts little slits in the paper to make this fun sort of um, crisscross pattern that you can just do across your project. So so those are the, um, the other dies. Again, tonight's card, we're just going to use this big one. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to grab my stamp and cut machine here. Oh, there we go. And flip that around. We're going to take our paper. So I am only need three butterflies for this card, but I'm just going to cut them all out because... Um, I will use them for other, the ones that I'm not using, I'll use for other projects, right? So I'm just gonna position that on there. Now I do like to secure it um, with a post-it note just so that it doesn't slide around. So let's get that in place here. 
So I'm just gonna kind of angle that across and ah, I do have a top plate. Miracle of miracles, there we go. So that post-it note is just gonna, my, my bottom plate is pretty curvy on this, um, the one I happen to grab here. So um, that post-it note is just gonna keep things from shifting. I'm also not, not on, I'm like half on a bone folder here. I'm like, why am I all wobbly? Oh my goodness. All right, I don't normally die cut at this desk. This is usually my stamping desk, um, but it is better lighting, uh, way better lighting, and then um, you guys can see it. So, all right, we're just gonna pull off the uh, post-it note there that was holding things in place. And you can see all these fun butterflies that we have. So for this card, we're actually gonna, we're not gonna use the blue or the, the green one or the blue one. I guess it's kind of like pool party, which is sort of blue. Um, Mint macaron, um, just jade kind of thing. Um, the blue one we're not going to use and the yellow, the big yellow one we're not going to use for this card. So I'll set those aside and save those for another project. I'm going to use these three butterflies for this card. And then I wanted to show you something I discovered. Um, so when you cut this out, I'm going to shove this over. I don't want to put it too far because I need it again in a minute. Um, when you cut this out, you've got some extra on the sides. And we're going to actually use the... Um, we're going to use one of the butterflies here to decorate the inside of our card. So you can still cut these out. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. You could still capture these and have them sort of flying off the page on a card. Um, or, of course, you could flip the paper over and cut that as a strip and use that um, that kind of cotton candy, <laughs> rainbow cotton candy uh, pattern on the other side. That would be another option. But um, I chose to use um, the butterfly here. Um, cut it out so that I wouldn't have to cut it and then I lost it. What did I do with it? Oh, I know where it is. I put it right where it belongs. I bet. Okay. Yes, it's right where it belongs. So this is what I did. I took this and I just rough cut out that. I then took my, my uh, post-it note. The reason I cut it out roughly was if I cut it out with the die, it would have cut into this one. And I just wanted to capture that. I might want to use that for something else. So I cut out just this butterfly. And so now I have this partial butterfly that we're going to use on the inside of our card. So let me set this aside and we will... Don't need the dye anymore. We're gonna do some embossing. So let's set everybody over here. We don't need you. All right, this is where we wanna get into some measurements. So let's talk about that. So our card base is your standard eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Then I have a piece that we're gonna emboss. This piece is four by five and a quarter. And then I have a piece of that paper. Um, I'm using the coral, Calypso coral side with the little speckle pattern. And that is, got my little cheat sheet here, <laughs> the design DSP. That's that's demonstrator talk for designer series paper. Um, so if you ever hear someone say DSP, they're talking about designer series paper. So this is two and seven eighths by four and an eighth. And then my uh, uh, white piece that's going to layer on top of that is uh, basic white, and it's two and three quarters by four. So let's go ahead, and we're going to just emboss this quickly, and we'll put our card together. So I'm going to slide the uh, emboss and cut machine right back into the picture here, and I'm going to change up my sandwich. So I'm taking out my plates, and I'm taking out this thin adapter thing for the die, and I'm just keeping this platform in here. And I'm going to grab my Parisian floral... Blah, 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 blah. What does that say, Susan? Read the words. Parisian? Parisian? Parisian flourish. Oh my goodness, I can't talk tonight. 3D embossing folder. And I'm going to emboss my... Um, my background with this. Now I, <clears throat> as you guys know, some of you know this about me, I'm kind of anal about things being even. Um, my helper, Cheryl, who helps me with uh, my swaps and things is even more anal than I am, which is what I love about her. We laugh at ourselves that we're so picky about stuff being straight. But I just took a minute there to kind of line up the pattern so that it was, um, even on both sides. Um, you can see like this part where it comes in. 
um, I've got a little point there and two dots. And then on this side, it's about the same amount of point and two dots, maybe a skosh more, but it'll still look even. So, um, and now because this is a 3D folder, I want to use the specialty 3D embossing folder. This is probably one of the questions that I get most often from people. Um, if they're using a 3D folder, uh, and they're using, um, it can be the Big Shot or whatever you're using. If you're using the new style 3D folders, you do want to use the um, specialty plate to get the best embossing from that. So I'm just going to crank this through. Clunk. <laughs> Sorry, probably jiggled you guys there. Sorry about that. And then we're going to take this out of the way. And look how pretty. So pretty. It's a very deep, um, the 3D embossing folders are a very deep uh, texturing, which is really pretty. All right, so let's put our card together. And I have this uh, basic white card base that we already discussed the size on. I'm just going to grab my bone folder here and get this creased down. And then we're going to layer this on top. Now, I am not going to, um, I'm not going to put my Snail Plus on the back of this because this is such strong adhesive and this paper has now been textured and it could actually rip. So I'm actually going to put my, um, my Seal Plus on the smooth paper. And um, that way I'm not going to get any... Uh, ripping or tearing. So if that ever happens to you, um, just know that it's just a nature of the um, embossed, when you emboss paper. So we're just going to layer that on there. All right, we're all set. And then we're going to take this piece and I'm it's so pretty. I feel bad, but it, it's, I like a lot of white. I just think it, um, on certain cards, it's just very soothing and elegant um, to have a lot of white. So we're only going to see a 16th, this is an eighth of an inch bigger, which means it'll only be a 16th of an inch border all the way around. But that was what I liked the best when I was creating it. So um, I'm just gonna, I had to look at my sample there. I couldn't remember if I popped this up and I actually did not. So we're going to adhere that directly onto our embossed piece here. Hopefully I've got you on camera. All right, now we're time going to fly in our little butterflies here that we cut out. Now, of course, we could have stamped this in black and colored these butterflies. So when you run out of the paper, um, that is always an option, right? Um, actually, it's this one right here, isn't it? Um, but um, I am... I'm doing the easy button. So this, the picture on the front is actually reduced size from the actual, um, the actual stamp. So if you're wondering why when I'm holding this up, if that one's smaller than, that one's smaller than this one, that's why they just reduced it so that it would fit on the box. But the, I could have stamped that and colored it, but this is faster. So we're going for fast tonight. So this is going to go right in the center and then... This one will go above, and this one will go below. Kind of reminds me of a botanical um, notebook, like a field notebook or something, like biologists might have. It's kind of that same look. And I'm stalling because I am trying to find my dimensionals. I have them everywhere, but of course, when I want them, they've flown the coop. So I'm gonna flip over the center butterfly I'm going to put two dimensionals on the back side of that. And the reason I lay these out is that helps me see where I want to place them. So these are not adhered yet, but that gives me a, um, a good idea of where I want this one to be. Since that one's the center, it's kind of the most important. And then these guys, I'm just going to put one dimensional on. And then we're going to add some words and a little bling, and we are good to go. So we've got our three butterflies there. Awesome. Now we're going to 
We're going to hope I didn't lose that. Uh, oh, gosh. I think that little partial butterfly I had flew away. I pulled it out to show you, and now it's disappeared. Okay, that's right. We'll find it, right? If we don't, we will cut another one. No worries. Oh, there it is. It was hiding under the paper. So this little butterfly is going to go on the inside of our card, and it's going to be just flying up right off the edge of the card. So even though it's not a full butterfly, you can still use those. So capture those off the sides of your paper and use every butterfly you can. So we're just going to have this coming up right in the corner here. I'm just going to line that edge where it was the, on the edge of the paper with the edge of my card. And I'm sticking it down now because I know that one's going to disappear again. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna. I need a greeting for my card, and I decided to use the um, the quite curvy set. Um, kind of funny. I grabbed that one because I am going to be offering a class with the butterfly brigands, which is going to be similar to the um, quite curvy class that I did in the fall, um, where you uh, uh, can. Um, Purchase the kit and uh, make four cards. So watch for that. The information will be coming out very soon on that. I'm going to use this greeting right here that just says hello. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be using this card for. So that's just a nice generic one. I'm actually going to emboss. I've got my black cardstock here and I've got my, oh my gosh, this is my ugly Versamark. Let's see. <laughs> that's embarrassing. <clears throat> But, you know, i got two of everything. Okay, well, more than two of some things. All right, that one looks a little better. Let's go with this one. It looks a lot juicier, uh, less beat up. But the thing is, you know, they work. They last forever. They just don't maybe look so pretty. Um, so I have my black card stuck here. I'm just going to stamp the word hello. Now, when you're going to be embossing, especially when you're using a white powder on black, you want to try to not handle it with your hands too much, <clears throat> especially if you have lotion on your hands, because then the... Uh, powder is going to stick not just to that Versamark ink. So I don't know if you can even probably, oh yeah, there, you can just barely see what I stamped. I'm going to dip it in the powder here and um, just shake it and then tap off the excess. So the powder stuck. We got one missing spot there. Need my little spoon that I usually use. Aha. It's in my drawer right where it belongs. Got a little plastic spoon here. I just want a little more white on the uh, curvy part of the H there. There we go. So I have my word hello embossed. You want to try to, um, if there are any little flecks right around the word, if you can um, brush those off before you melt the powder, uh, you'll be happier with the end result. If, um, if you do get any accidentally, I'll show you how to fix that. Um, so we've got this uh, ready to be heated now. I'm going to pull out this, I call this my embossing oven. <laughs> Cheapest oven you'll ever buy uh, because you just make it, it's free. Um, so I just have a piece of like brown cardboard back here, cardstock, um, chipboard I guess you would call it. It's kind of heavy duty brown. Uh, it comes in the back of like some of our glimmer papers and our specialty papers. And then I, I just wrapped it in foil and just had some packing tape to holding that down. And I have some paper clips here. So the paper clip is going to hold my paper so that I don't burn my fingers. Yay. And the foil is going to actually be a little heat conductor. So it's going to make that uh, powder melt faster. So I'm going to turn on the heat gun. You're going to hear a loud noise. Well, kind of loud. It sounds like a blow dryer, right? This is a lot higher, hotter than a blow dryer, though. So this is going to melt the powder. And when it melts, it's going to turn from a dull boring uh, powdery thing to a shiny hard white. I'll turn that off so let's just check it here and you can see that it's bring the light in. You can see that it's shiny. there's no um, dull spots that didn't get melted so that's good to go. Um, now, I got lucky on that one, and I didn't end up with any little flecks of white. If you do get any little, if you're embossing on black and you get some flecks of white that um, you don't want, just take a, either our uh, basic black Stampin' Blend or a Sharpie marker and just cover that up with black, and it'll disappear. So, we're going to grab our 
classic label punch here and we're going to punch out the word hello. I'm not really worrying about centering it because I'm actually going to cut off these points here which would require some paper snips. Aha! Uh -huh. This is my fun little uh, paper snip stopper. This was a gift from Stampin' Up! Um, to their leaders at our, uh, our onstage in uh, last November which was onstage online and we know the one coming up this November is also going to be online. So I'm just going to nip off the ends. And I had so much fun with my team at that event. We did we zoomed together and even though we were all we weren't together, we were together if that makes sense. <laughs> all right, so we've got our little hello there. And we're going to bring our card back in and that's going to go right there. And I'm going to go ahead and pop that up on some mini dimensionals. And then I'm just going to add, you guys know how I roll, I'm going to add a couple rhinestones because oh, a little sparkle makes everything better, right? So I'm just going to pull off these little mini dimensionals I put on the back. And we're going to pop our hello right there. And then I'm just going to add, let's see, they're, they're hiding, but they are here somewhere. I have, ha. So I'm going to use the champagne rhinestones. I finally remembered to order more. I'd been out. I kept wanting to use them and realized that I was out and kept forgetting to order more. Doesn't that drive you crazy when you do that? So I've got one of the little ones here. I'm just going to put two on this butterfly just on its wings. And then I'm going to put two on the yellow butterfly down here on its wings. They're called champagne, but they're sort of a, a pinkish, yellowish color, and they, because they are trans, translucent, kind of see-through, um, they match a lot of different colors once they're on, if that makes sense. There we go. I want to cooperate. And there we have our card. I'm, you could also add rhinestones on the big butterfly. I'm going to just leave it as is because it's already got the greeting on it. And then inside the card, I'm going to leave it blank except for that cute little butterfly that is flying in from the corner. <laughs> so that is our card tonight. Um, this will be one of the cards in the class. And um, again, stay tuned for the information and the details on that class. But if you want to go ahead and pick up your uh, butterfly uh, collection before it goes on back order, that would probably be a really good idea. Um, it is available to customers to purchase today. And um, you can get the entire collection, uh, let's see, which is right here, and that's $71.25. You get all of these things or you can get individual things. So like I got three packs of the paper because I knew I would want a lot of butterflies. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. I'm gonna to flip the camera so I can say goodbye. Thanks for joining me tonight. Have a great evening and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.